Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to So That Just Happened, a podcast for those who have lost their person and want to find themselves. I'm Carly Cooper, a single mom, widow, coach, author, and chronic truth seeker. My superpower is finding the funny, the hope, and the silver lining in any shit situation. This podcast is for the purpose of education only and is not a replacement for therapy. If you need additional support, please seek out a trained professional for help with your specific situation. Let's get to it, shall we? I've been told many times this past year how strong I am and how impressed people are with how I've managed to get my life back on track since my husband died. While that's really nice to hear, it's also kind of strange to me. Because I feel like it's always been who I am and how I've navigated my way through most of my adult life. For as long as I can remember, I have lived by a certain set of high standards and a moral code about how I wanted to conduct myself. So it doesn't feel particularly impressive to me. I just applied these standards, beliefs, and key life lessons to help me navigate my way through the grieving process. Before I share what some of these lessons are, I want to first give the disclaimer that I'm not an expert on grief. There are plenty of qualified therapists and practitioners who have studied and researched grief and written amazing books about it. I'm just someone who's experienced it and has managed to get to the other side. I also want to say that there's no right or wrong way to grieve or a specific timeline you should follow. Sure, there are steps you can take, tools you can implement, and markers to measure your progress. But it's all relative based on your situation, your personality, your upbringing, and your readiness. So please don't judge or compare yourself to me or others who may be doing it differently than you are. There are many reasons people experience grief. The death of a loved one, including a pet, divorce or changes in a relationship, and this can also include friendships, changes in your health or the health of someone close to you, a job loss, changes in your financial security, or even the loss of a dream that never came to be. So in one form or another, I think it's safe to say we all have or have had reason to feel grief in our life. The bigger questions to ask are, have you properly dealt with it? Have you unpacked the feelings, both emotional and physical, that grief can evoke? Are you even aware that what you may be experiencing is actually grief? Grief can present itself through feelings of anger, anxiety, blame, fear, loneliness, shock, sadness, denial, depression, guilt, irritability, and in some cases, even relief. You may have difficulty concentrating and focusing, experiencing fatigue, headaches, upset stomach, tightness in your chest or throat, a rapid heartbeat, trouble sleeping, low energy, and feelings of restlessness or lack of desire to do things that used to bring you enjoyment. Pretty much sounds like a day in the life for me. When you suffer a great loss of any kind, there will always be a part of you that gets triggered throughout your life. Anything I read or watch now that touches on death or someone having to say goodbye will instantly give me that lump in the throat feeling, a heavy sensation in my chest and tears to spill down my cheeks. But I got into the weeds and I faced my grief head on. So these are just knee jerk reactions, not crippling setbacks. So what are some ways that you can face your grief head on? Here are some lessons I've adopted along the way that have really helped me heal and move forward. Start somewhere. And a good place to begin is accepting your circumstance. You don't have to like it, and you can believe it's incredibly unfair. But in order to begin the process of moving forward, you do have to accept it. You can't change it. So don't spend your energy wishing it were different or staying stuck thinking of all the ways you could have tried to prevent it from happening. True healing can only begin when you accept what is and decide what you're going to do or not do about your situation. 
check your environment. They say your inner world is a reflection of your outer world. The inner world is everything that happens in our minds, our thoughts and emotions and our feelings and beliefs. The outer world, these are situations and circumstances that happen to us. It's our physical reality. And these two worlds are deeply connected and influence each other. So if you are living in a cluttered, messy, chaotic space, that's pretty much an indication of what's going on inside your mind. And if you're attracting negative, dramatic people into your life, they're a projection of the energy you're sending out. If you find yourself bumping up against conflict, roadblocks, and obstacles, those are also indications of where your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs are focused. In order to find inner peace, calm, and strength, it's important to declutter your mind and your physical space. For me, I didn't want to be surrounded by all of my late husband's stuff. It didn't feel like it was going to be a healthy way for me to move forward. And living in clutter makes me anxious. So I asked my son what he wanted to keep, and I donated the rest. It wasn't an easy process. It almost feels like you're erasing their existence. But for me, the warm feelings come from the memories shared, not the clothes that were worn. Be kind, patient, and compassionate with yourself. You have been through a major ordeal. Your goals and plans and dreams have been derailed. Your world and everything that felt safe and secure about it has been flipped upside down. So who you are now is not who you were before. So you can't continue operating in the same way you used to, with the same demands and expectations. For a good year after Mark died, I felt like the little flakes inside of a snow globe. I had been shaken and was now floating all around and I I didn't feel like I had landed yet. Grieving, healing, and figuring out your new normal takes time. Give yourself some grace to land softly. Growth is in the action. I love reading and learning, and I've acquired a lot of great knowledge in my day from doing so. But unfortunately, real change doesn't occur by gathering facts and formulas and strategies alone. It's not about how much you know, but what you actually do with that information. So keep it simple. Take one modality or concept that resonates with you, put it into action, and repeat it until it becomes an ingrained habit or ritual. Then take on another. Be selfish. Not in an egotistical, narcissistic kind of way, but in a way that is nurturing. In a way that gives you inner peace, energy, and the drive to keep going. This can look like saying yes to hobbies or projects that make your soul sing or saying no to commitments that drain you. Here's a good way to determine if you're truly saying yes to something for the right reasons. Let's say someone asks you to do something in a few weeks or a month from now. Before you answer, take a moment to ask yourself, if I had to do this thing tomorrow, would I be excited about it or make an excuse to get out of it? If you feel any sense of dread, say no. Making sure you're well-rested, happy, fulfilled, and energized isn't selfish. It allows you to show up for everyone else in a more flattering light. Learn to count on you. While it's amazing and important to have people around to help and support you, at the end of the day, all you will ever have is you. I don't mean that in a morbid, depressing way, but the truth is people have their own lives and shit to deal with. After the dust settles, when the arranged meal trains are over, it's up to you to get your life back on track. Now is not the time to abandon yourself. You are stronger and more capable than you think. And that doesn't mean you can't seek professional help if you feel you need it, or that you won't have days that kick your ass. And it's okay to not always be okay. But building trust in yourself and learning to depend on and rely on you is empowering and super attractive. 
bet on you and take a risk. Anything that has potential to improve your life involves some kind of risk, whether it's a new job, a new relationship, a move to another country, or following in the questionable footsteps of Carrie Russell's character Felicity and deciding to cut your beautiful iconic curls into a pixie cut. There are no guarantees that you're making the right decision. But staying stagnant, holding on to the past, or choosing to remain in the safe, predictable confines of your comfort zone is a certainty for boredom and unhappiness. Take a shot. Try something new. But if you do decide to drastically cut your hair, please go to a professional. Give yourself a fighting chance to make that look work for you. Challenge your old beliefs. Let this life-altering situation help you grow and evolve by questioning your beliefs. What do you still strongly believe in? What beliefs have you outgrown? Which were never yours to begin with? Take some time to reflect on your situation and be willing to open up your mind to new beliefs and possibilities. Take the word failure out of your vocabulary. I never use the word failure. I don't believe in it. Instead, I see things as missteps or mistakes or lessons that I still need to embody. These are just indications that I took a wrong turn or I chose a path that wasn't the right one. Or at the time, it felt right, but I outgrew the experience. There is no shame in trying something and getting it wrong. As long as you're out there participating in your life, learning and getting back up after you fall, you are succeeding. A life really lived is going to be messy. That's why laundry was invented. When you're in the thick of it or having an emotional day, Avoid making big decisions. It takes time to recalibrate after a loss. Making a major decision when you're not thinking straight could add more stress and anxiety down the road. It's better to wait and hold off on making big changes until you feel more grounded, settled, and adjusted to your new reality. Give yourself permission to feel all the feels, even the good ones. It's okay to laugh. You're allowed to smile and enjoy yourself. I remember when the first anniversary of Mark's death came around, a few people reached out to me and said, I'm sure this is a really hard day for you. They were well-intentioned and caring comments. But I thought, well, what if I don't have a terrible and sad day? Does that make me an uncaring person? I decided to not allow other people's projections to influence my mood. I would feel however I was going to feel without judgment or guilt. Some days, when you feel like you should be happy, you may feel like shit. And on those milestone dates that you expect will hit you between the eyes, you may feel like going dancing. Allow it all. You've earned the right to feel however you're going to feel. There's no straight line to healing. So, Those are my lessons that I wanted to share with you, and I hope that at least one of them resonates with you. Here's to grieving with grace. I'll see you in the next episode. All right, my friends, thank you so much for listening to this So That Just Happened podcast. I really hope you found value in this episode and that you're walking away with at least one golden nugget that you can implement or feel inspired by. I would be so grateful if you would share it with one friend or family member who is committed to moving forward and transforming their life. Make sure you subscribe so you can catch every new episode and please leave me a review. It would mean so much to me. Also, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at at Coach Carly. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you in the next episode.